I'm going to have a conversation with my friend uh, Andy Saranian. Um, so Andy, um, you describe Andrews McMeal as a talent agency, and I would surmise that in our engagement conference uh, here, that your talent, the people who produce the comics, the columnists like Dear Abby, have been engaging audiences a lot longer. Oh, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to have Andy tell about himself. Um, have been engaging your audiences um, longer than most of the content we've been talking about here. So, with your background, um, launching Real Simple at Time Inc., running Entertainment Weekly, being the president of Meredith Magazine Group, what attracted you to Andrews McMeal? So, tell us uh, about your new gig in Kansas City. Okay. Actually, can I start by saying that I feel like a little bit of a prima donna showing up here without prepared remarks or a whiz-bang uh, slideshow? I think Amanda might be happy about that, but maybe the rest of you aren't. And please chalk it up to the fact that I am new in this gig and also that I love to come to these things so much more to hear other people speak than to hear myself. So I've been very focused on what I've learned here and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you, but, but it has been a great a great couple of days so far. I had a dinner on, on a Thursday night with a guy who runs a digital agency in Kansas City, a pretty big one, that's uh, about the same size as Andrews McMeal. And he says to me, uh, how can you afford to, to do this, to come to this? And I, I kind of looked back and felt like, how can you afford not to? And I, I just wanted to thank you for allowing me to, to be part of this. So um, a lot of my New York friends uh, wondered why I, I took this job. Maybe you wondered why. And, and uh, so this is really a story of personal engagement, I guess. I, I have uh, a few criteria that, that I look at. It has nothing to do with size. I was involved with bigger things when I was um, in, in the rest of my career. And I think, in fact, size has become something of a problem. I feel like the big organizations who spend 75% of their time keeping the ships afloat and only a little bit of their time propelling them forward are a lot less interesting than they used to be. There's a, uh, uh, for me, um, there's, there's something about uh, the nimbleness of, of a smaller organization and, and being able to focus on the problems in a little bit of your time and the solutions with most of the time is, is much more interesting. So I have three criteria for myself and why I took this gig. One is it's got to fit my personal wheelhouse and pop culture is right down my, my uh, sweet spot. Uh, number two, it's got to be something that I've never done before. I think it's much, much better to live your life in chapters, and I think he, people get bored if they do the same thing tomorrow that they did yesterday, so I try to follow that myself, and uh, this is a chapter for me. And the third thing is I look for places that I can win and where there's a real opportunity. And uh, Andrews McMeal is, is a 45-year-old company that's been run by one guy uh, for 45 years, and they're great at what they do, uh, but they missed a lot in terms of uh, the digital world and di digital distribution and, and many different formats of the content for the talent that they have. So I looked at it and I said, I can see the future here. Chance to win something I've never done before and right in my wheelhouse. So many of the news organizations here and on the live stream have traditionally been your customer or your comics and your columnists. Um, are you continuing down that road um, or what are you going to do with this company and your talent? I think that the word transformation is, is kind of highly overused these days, and people talk about taking traditional media companies or older line media companies and transforming them into something else. In the case of Andrews McNeil, uh, we don't have to do that at all. We really have to add things. So I fully intend to, to do some of the things that we've done, and I should explain a little bit about what the company does. Anders McNeil is, is, was first a content syndicate that took political columnists and cartoonists and then comic strip cartoonists and a lot of uh, thing, the kind of content that newspapers wanted in, in the old days. And they corralled it, found it, and distributed it widely through newspapers. And then they became a publishing house and started to publish books and calendars and other traditional forms of media that took advantage of much of the same talent. So I think of it as pretty good businesses. Those, those businesses still exist, and they will for a long, long time. The newspaper world is probably in slight decline, or maybe even more than slight decline, and the, the book retailing world is, is probably leveled off, or maybe even in slight decline. 
Uh, but that doesn't mean that those aren't very profitable businesses for us and ways to engage our audience. So uh, for me, uh, I think of syndication uh, very differently in the digital world. How do I, uh, how do I describe it? If, if uh, in the old days when newspapers would, would use content to reach their audiences, those newspapers were very profitable. They had high margins and they were able to pay a lot for that content. Same thing on television, a local television station could pay a lot for Seinfeld running at 11 because they were high profit margin businesses. Well, in the digital world, syndication doesn't really make sense to me. It, it's all about exclusivity in a market. And so when we uh, let Yahoo use our content, it isn't syndication, it's they're paying us a, a fee. It's a, either a licensing fee or a rev share. And I think that's quite a different model than the old syndication model. So clearly what we have in front of us is an opportunity to get our content in front of users, but to control that experience directly ourselves. We have a pretty significant site now called Go Comics, which uh, we control the way the content is distributed. We, we find new artists for it, and we reach the audiences and monetize them ourselves. That's the direction that I would see the company going, is having much more control of uh, its, its customer relationships. So are you going to innovate in um, storytelling instead of just uh, flat comics? What, what about animation and other technologies? Right, right. That's a great question. So I, people are absolutely engaged with video and animation in ways that they're not with uh, static print. Um, I'm not saying one's better than the other. In fact, I think a lot of the time when you see something uh, in print, when you read a book and then you go to the movie, the movie's often less good, almost always less good, because you imagined what those characters sounded like and you saw so much more in your mind. And I think that's true with uh, Calvin and Hobbes. You know exactly how Calvin sounds. If you're a Calvin and Hobbes fan, you don't want to hear somebody else's idea of his voice. So I'm not sure that we're going to translate a lot of our content. There's some that is translatable, and you can look at successes like uh, Charlie Brown, The Christmas Special. That certainly worked moving from one format to another. But I think for the most part, art works for whatever the format is that it's created for first best. So I think there are a whole bunch of digital animators out there in the world. Some guy is in his bedroom right now in Madison, Wisconsin, some 19-year-old kid who, who's really good in animation and he does it much more cheaply than the people at Pixar could ever do it, and he has no way to distribute his content. And I've got a, an audience of people who are very engaged around humor and that type of content, and I could easily build a, a site or a channel of the site that includes digital animation and hopefully from there uh, expands into many, many other outlets, but I do see animation as a part of the future. So um, comics, animation, art, but you've got Dear Abby and you have other text-based content. What happens there? Well, I, I think uh, we look at our business by uh, lanes of content, what we're good at. We're, we're very good at, at adult-facing humor. We're also very good at kid-facing humor. And the third category that you described, the Dear Abby, I put into this, this uh, inspiration and advice content, which happened to work very well in, for a newspaper syndicate, but it also works very well in the publishing, book publishing category. We last year published a, a book of poetry by a, a young woman named uh, Langley Ev. Poetry. And she had a, just a wild following, started in Malaysia, but it, she was very, very popular through the web, but she monetized it through book sales. And I fully expect us to take that inspiration category, which I could say cuts across so much of what we do, and say, well, we're very good at that content lane, we're very good at humor, we're very good at kid-facing stuff. I'm not that interested in publishing things that have nothing to do with those three categories right now. In book publishing, um, where are you in terms of ebooks, digital versus ink on paper? Uh, it, it depends on the category. Uh, cookbooks do pretty well in ebooks, and that is one other category that, that we have right now is cookbooks. Humor doesn't do that well in ebooks. We publish, uh, there's an author uh, named Matthew Inman who goes by The Oatmeal, and he, uh, he does pretty well in ebooks. He does even better, much better, in print books. Um, I think the, the, the genius of Matthew Inman is that he himself created this brand through his website and his, um, uh, his social outreach. So he is, he already does everything that he needs to do for himself by himself, except he doesn't have the, the imprimatur of, of a book publisher. So we publish his books. 
You probably read about his Kickstarter campaign. He went to uh, Kickstarter and raised some money for a game, which is essentially Uno, an old game, but with Matthew's humor. And he put it out there on Kickstarter to raise, I think he was trying to raise a few hundred thousand dollars, and he wound up raising something north of five million or maybe approaching $10 million for a game, all because his audience was engaged in what he did already through all these different formats. Um, in terms of new talent, the 19-year-old in Madison, Wisconsin, do you have an easy process to discover and sift and sort through people who are raising their hand and say, we'd like to join your talent agency? Mm -hmm. So th uh, th that, that's a good question. I'm sorry to say that the answer is right now, we don't have a very easy process because one of the big gaping holes at Anders McNeil has been our inability to really reach customers as directly as we want to reach them. So the good news of that answer, though, is that there's all sorts of opportunity in what we're about to build, all sorts of opportunity in terms of the number of jobs that I have to offer and, and services that I'm going to need from many of the people in this room. So uh, uh, the answer is not yet, but it's coming. We do have a, a site called Comic Sherpa, which is um, a place that you can submit your strips. I also ought to point out um, along the lines of Comic Sherpa that, in my opinion, user-generated content is oftentimes uh, bad. It's oftentimes overrated, and a lot of people think that they're funnier than they are, they think they're more talented than they are, and that you wind up with a lot of noise. So I think there's a real role for curators in this world, and we're very good at curating. We, we have a lot of editors who are very good at not just figuring out what's funny and what's not, or what's engaging and what's not, but also helping people to um, uh, nurture that talent and become even better. So I think that we will, uh, over the next uh, six months to 18 months, have a much more robust way of vetting talent. There are a lot of uh, star cartoonists in the world who are retired. And you wonder, when you think about creators and artists, why do people retire? How many times have you heard of novelists retiring or, or movie stars retiring? They don't do it. But cartoonists retire. Gary Larson's retired. Bill Watterson's retired. Kathy Geisweitz, retired, and, and why? It's because the grind of doing a daily strip and meeting deadlines, I think, gets to them after a while. So part of my objective here is to bring those people back. I don't think that we'll ever see another Far Side cartoon. I don't think we'll ever see uh, another Calvin and Hobbes, but I really hope that Gary Larson and Bill Watterson and the like want to help to nurture that next wave of talent, and we can find them in so many easier ways than we used to be able to find them because of the web. So I think marrying, in some ways, the old and the new is going to be a very productive way for us to make user-generated content even better. One more question, and a bit unfair because you've only been here 24 hours. Uh, what are your perceptions of the Missouri School of Journalism, RJI, and are they <laughs> going to be able to uh, help you in the future in this transformation. Oh gosh, um, <laughs> I have nothing but positive things to tell you about that. Uh, and it's partly because I have an 11th grade daughter who, who um, I'm trying to, to convince the school that she might be a good candidate down the road. Um, but but uh, I think this is such a cool place to have this kind of talent and these resources, to have the, the NBC affiliate located or, or just a couple of miles away and connected to the school. You don't get that. It, it, most places and to actually train the, the future journalists of the world with this sort of open environment and the resources, it's, it's incredible. I also have found the whole Midwest um, a very interesting place for, uh, I'm sort of a hard driving New York guy at, at heart, even though I don't appear that way, I think, to most people. But I come here and I think, God, everybody's so accessible and, and uh, likable and, and uh, there's just, it's been so easy to network throughout Kansas City. I feel like I already know so many people. I just hired a, a digital leader. I'm in the throes of hiring a chief marketing officer. I've got all, all sorts of, of connections to people in Kansas City and, and now uh, Columbia that I didn't have before so quickly. And I've, I'm just amazed that the coasts of the world, I've also spent a lot of time on the West Coast, don't understand what an incredible culture and value it is to, to be here in, in the Midwest. Great, thank you. So, we have time, I think, for a couple of questions. Um, I think we'd be remiss to not talk about Charlie Hebdo um, when talking about comics. And I'm just wondering if you could 
speak a little bit about engagement and where we find ourselves now um, after that event? Sure, so that's a great question. So um, I, I will take it actually back to uh, Gary Trudeau in Doonesbury. So at the beginning when, uh, and, and Gary Trudeau was, was the first client of, uh, of Andrews McNeil. They found him at Yale. And you can imagine during the Vietnam War when Gary Trudeau is writing what he's writing, the, just the visceral negative response from some people. And it was very courageous to do what he did. And he kind of transformed the art form from being about lighthearted humor in some ways to being about important things. I've always thought that storytelling is really important. It's, it's part of why uh, I loved my, my gig at Entertainment Weekly so much. And I always thought that we were talking about the work. It wasn't about who's sleeping with who. It wasn't about the personal lives. It was always about the work. And I always thought that's important. That's what people do. And, and kind of it, that's, the, that's the part of their lives that, that matters. I think what the the whole Charlie Hebdo thing was just punctuated that in spades to say that really mattered. That changed the leadership of, of France for years. It, it, it just the ability to do that. You know, I, I sort of get goosebumpy when I think about it. So important. I feel like most of what we do at Andrews McNeil has that same. Um, it's, it's in that same vein of being important. It's not always about the same kinds of serious topics, but that freedom and ability to express it through humor is part of why I love what I'm, what I'm doing so far. But thank you for bringing that up. I think that was a really important 